This is a LibriVox recording, and all LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. This reading by Lucy Burgoyne. Enter Mitchell by Henry Lawson. The western train had just arrived at Redfern Railway Station with a lot of ordinary passengers and one swagman. He was short and stout and bow-legged and freckled and sandy. He had red hair and small, twinkling grey eyes. And what often was such things? The expression of a born comedian. He was dressed in a ragged, well-washed print shirt, an old black waistcoat with a calico back, a pair of cloudy moleskins patched at the knees and held up by a plaited green hide belt buckled loosely round his hips, a pair of well-worn fuzzy blucher boots and a soft felt hat, green with age and with no brim worth mentioning and no crown to speak of. He swung a swag onto the platform, shouldered it, pulled out a billy and a water bag, then went to a dog box in the brake van. Five minutes later he appeared on the edge of the cab platform with an anxious-looking cattle dog crouching against his legs and one end of the chain in his hand. He eased down the swag against a post, turned his face to the city, tilted his hat forward and scratched the well-developed back of his head with a little finger. He seemed undecided what track to take. Cab, sir? The swagman turned slowly and regarded Cabby with a quiet grin. Now, do I look as if I want a cab? Well, why not? No harm anyway, I thought you might want a cab. Swaggy scratched his head reflectively. Well, he said, you're the first man that has thought so these ten years. What do I want with a cab? To go where you're going, of course. Do I look knocked up? I didn't say you did. And I didn't say you said I did. Now, I've been on the track this five years. I've tramped two thousand miles since last Christmas, and I don't see why I can't tramp that last mile. Do you think my old dog wants a cab? The dog shivered and whimpered. He seemed to want to get away from the crowd. But then, you see, you ain't going to carry that swag through the streets, are you? asked the cabman. Why not? Who'll stop me? There ain't no law again it, I believe. But then you see it don't look well, you know. Ah, I thought we'd get to it at last. The traveller upended his bluey against his knee, gave it an affectionate pat, then straightened himself up and looked fixedly at the cabman. Now look here, he said, sternly and impressively. Can you see anything wrong with that old swag of mine? It was a stout, dumpy swag with a red blanket outside, patched with blue and the edge of a blue blanket showing in the inner rings at the end. The swag might have been newer. It might have been cleaner. It might have been hooped with decent straps instead of bits of clothesline and green hide, but otherwise there was nothing the matter with it as swags go. I've humped that old swag for years, continued the bushman. I've carried that old swag thousands of miles, as that old dog knows, and no one ever bothered about the look of it, or of me, or of my old dog, neither. And do you think I'm going to be ashamed of that old swag for a cabby or anyone else? Do you think I'm going to study anybody's feelings? No one ever studied mine. I'm in two minds to summon you for using insulting language t towards me. He lifted the swag by the twisted towel which served for a shoulder strap, swung it into the cab, got in himself and hauled the dog after him. You can drive me somewhere where I can leave my swag and dog while I get some decent clothes to see a tailor in, he said to the cabman. My old dog ain't used to cabs, you see. Then he added reflectively, I drove a cab myself once for five years in Sydney. End of Enter Mitchell by Henry Lawson